controversial Southeast Development Establishment Bill has passed the second reading in the House of Representatives. The bill, which aims at developing infrastructure in the Southeast region, had caused an uproar when it was introduced on the floor of the House last week, resulting in it being stepped down. During the plenary on Wednesday, the bill was sponsored by Stella Odua and Samuel Anyau. And after the bill's presentation, Senate President Bukola Saraki cautioned senators against eating up the policy of deliberating on the bill. Debt Management Office DMO has announced the commencement of a global offering of Nigeria's first diaspora bond to be dominated in dollars. To be denominated in dollars, Diaspora Bond is being floated to raise funds from Nigerians in the diaspora to finance capital projects and provide an opportunity for them to participate in the development of the country. The International Joint Lead Managers are Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, and the Standard Bank of South Africa Limited. The Nigerian Joint Lead Managers are First Bank of Nigeria Limited and United Bank of Africa PLC. DMO on its website says Nigeria had filed a registration statement for the bond with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. Application, according to the Debt Management Office, will be made for the bond to be admitted to the official list of the U.K. Listing Authority and the London Stock Exchange PLC. And this is to ensure that the bonds were admitted to trading on the London Stock Exchange regulated market. Ahead of the listing, the office said there would be a series of investor meetings in the UK, the US and Switzerland from June 13. The office said that pricing was expected to occur following the investor meetings and subject to market conditions. The total value of Nigeria's merchandise trade at the end of first quarter of 2017 has been estimated at 5.292 billion naira. The National Bureau of Statistics, MBS, says that total exports for the period under review stood at 3.006 billion naira, while total imports stood at 2.2865 billion naira. The MBS, in a report on foreign, foreign trade in good statistics for first quarter of 2017, posted it on its website and it says the amount represented a slight increase of 0.1% relative to the value of 5.286 billion naira, billion naira recorded in the preceding quarter. It explains that the marginal rise in exports coupled with a slight decrease in imports brought the country's trade balance to 719.4 billion naira during the period of from 671.3 billion. The report said that it represented a second consecutive positive trade balance after fourth quarter of negative trade balance. It said that the first positive trade balance was recorded in the fourth quarter of 2016 due to a rising export since fourth quarter of 2015 when trade was valued at 5.286 billion naira. The Bureau said that major export trading partners to the country in the quarter were India, US, Spain, Netherlands and France. The Bureau said that India was the largest export partner to Nigeria, which accounted for 22.24% of exports, followed by the US, which was 13.86%, and Spain accounted 10.81%. Other partners, he said, were Netherlands, which accounted for 8.32%, and France accounted for 6.5%. The Elisha-based International Bureau's PLC has finalized arrangement to merge with Interfact Beverages Limited and Powered Beverages Limited. IB PLC was incorporated in 1971 and got listed on the NSA in 1995. Interfact Beverages Limited, incorporated in 2007, is based in Onisha, while Powered Beverages Limited incorporated in 1978, is based in Port Harcourt, River State. The major shareholders of the three companies in the planned merger is Anoja Bosch Inviv in South Africa. IBL, in a notification to the Nigerian Stock Exchange, NSC, explains that they agree to explore combination of their businesses through a scheme of measure subject to requisite regulatory and shareholders' approvals. The Elisha-based IBL says the proposed measure was considered and approved 
at its board meeting on June 2, 2017. The Oshun State-based bearing firm said the measure would benefit all stakeholders, particularly shareholders. National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAPDAC, says European Union, EU, rejected 24 exported food products from Nigeria in 2016 for failing to meet standards. The NAPDAC spokesperson, Dr. Abubakar Jimo, says the five major products are groundnut, palm oil, sesame seed, and beans that were illegally exported to the EU. He noted that from the information made available to NAPDAC, Groundnut was rejected because it contained aflatoxin, which made the quality substandard. He said most of the products that were smuggled out of were not certified by the agency and Nigerian agricultural quarantine services at the ports. Lafarge Africa PLC has floated a 140 billion naira right issue to reposition its operations. The chairman of the company, Bolaji Balogun, addressing shareholders at the company's investors' firm held in Lagos, recalls that the company has not raised equity since 2005. The operations of the company, according to him, is being financed with internally generated funds and debt provided by the majority shareholders, other lenders and bondholders. He explains that the right issue proposed by the company's directors is targeted at reducing its debt profile, improve cash flow and position the firm for future expansion exercise. Balogo further explains that the right issue will also provide a solution to its foreign currency exposure and likely impact on the company's earnings. Balogo also explains that the company's largest shareholder, Lafarge Olsen, has expressed commitment to subscribe fully to the right through a conversion of existing shareholder loans. The president, Pragmatic Shareholders Association of Nigeria, Mrs. Bisi Bakari, says she is worried that the company may be leased from the Nigerian Stock Exchange if the existing shareholders fail to pay their rights due to economic recession facing the country. She urged the company to produce a written agreement from the Nigerian Stock Exchange as evidence that the company will not be leased if the shares are not fully subscribed to by the shareholders. The Senate has passed the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Bill 2017. The bill was passed following the adoption of a report of the Senate Committee on Trade and Investment on the bill. Presenting the report, Chairman of the Committee, Senator Fatima Raji Razaki, said the bill would help to develop businesses in Nigeria. She said that when a center to, the bill would promote fair, efficient and competitive markets in the country. In her remarks, the Deputy President of in his remarks, the Deputy President of the Senate, Mr. Ike Iperimadu, who presided at the plenary, found the lawmakers for ensuring the passage of the bill. Iperimadu said that the bill would assist in the ease of doing business in the country. He said that Nigeria appeared to have been found wanting in the area of business, adding that the bill will help to set some records straight. <laughs> Sokoto State Government is constructing a new cement factory through the Public-Private Partnership PPP. The cost of the project include 2.3 billion naira for local content and $26.9 million is for foreign content. Solid Minerals and Natural Resources Development Commissioner Bello Gurunyo says the cost of the cement plant project may increase depending on the currency fluctuations. The commissioner explains that Abdin Construction Company has indicated interest to acquire 50% equity share in the project. Governor Aminu Wazir Tambuad, according to him, had approved the expansion of the project from the projected production of 300 metric tons to 1,500 metric tons of cement daily. The commissioner also says that arrangement had reached an advanced stage for the establishment of a fertilizer plant on a public-private partnership at a cost of 5 billion naira. The plant, he said, will produce MPK and SPP fertilizer, which are in high demand. <laughs> Presidency is to construct a $1 billion information communication technology company to provide the growth for local technology. The ICT firm, which will be based in Abuja, will be Africa's first. Communication Minister Adibayo Shitu, who made this noon at the 2017 Digital 
Africa Conference and Exhibition says the proposed National ICT Park and Exhibition Center will attract investment into the ICT sector. The proposed ICT Center, he further explains, will complement the proposed ICT University and help to produce the skills required for Africa to participate in the fourth industrial revolution. <laughs> Acting President Yemi Oshibadu has requested the National Assembly to approve his request to access $1.5 billion loan from France, Islamic Development Bank and World Bank for infrastructural projects in 12 states. The loan request sent to the Senate President and Speaker of the House of Representatives is part of the 2016 to 2018 external borrowing plan and under the loan, Ogo and Kaduna State will each access $350 million for the estate policy operation from the World Bank. Others, like Eboi, will get $70 million for Eboi Ring Road Project, Abia State, $100 million for rural access and mobility project to be provided by the African Development Bank and Islamic Development Bank. Others to benefit from the loan are Kanu, Kasina, Jigawa, Enugu, Undu, and Plateau States. <laughs> National Bureau of Population has put the number of unemployed Nigerians in the past two years at 5.5 million under the Buhari administration. The Bureau, in its latest report on the unemployed, says 351,105 people were jobless at the end of the last quarter of 2016. As of August last year, the figure was 4.58 million, increasing to 5 million, 124,000, 913 people as of December 31st, 2016. The total unemployment figure recorded in two years of Buhari administration, according to the Bureau, raised the population of unemployed Nigerians to 28.58 million. The figure was 24.5 million in the first quarter of 2016, 26.06 million in the second quarter of 2016, and 24.5 million in the last quarter of last year. Yes, and that was added stories we've got for you for today on Economic Trend on your darling station, Rock City 101.9 FM. We're done with the stories for today, but don't forget to keep it there with us coming next week for another yet lovely stories on Economic Trend on your darling station, Rock City 101.9 FM. Do have a swell weekend. I am Olulade Sunyalu. Good morning. <laughs>